Car enthusiasts and thrill seekers, today I present to you the incredible tale of the Ford Territory Turbo that I bought on Marketplace. A completely misleading Facebook ad that said the car only needed two things and ended up needing over 200 things. Never trust anyone online. Little did I know I was about to go on a wild adventure, a roller coaster of emotions, and a wallet draining journey. But hey, that's what us car enthusiasts live for, right? Stay tuned as we bring this car back to life get it on the road, do some performance upgrades, including a thousand cc injectors, bigger fuel pump, high flow exhaust, and we actually do our own road tuning for the first time. So if you're thinking about ever tuning your car, you wanna know roughly what to do, stay tuned. We also tune it to have a ghost cam, which makes it sound like it's got lumpy as cams. Improve the performance dramatically and get this car driving and functioning nice again. So when I first laid eyes on this turbo territory, it had definitely seen better days. It was an absolute mess. What looked to be a past car from the previous owner. But deep down, I saw potential and untapped power waiting to be unleashed. With every dollar spent, every wrench turned, and every curse word uttered. Oh, f this hose, man. Thomas and I, my 15 year old son, transformed this once neglected beast into a <laughs> functioning car again. We bring it back to life, making it roadworthy and turning it into an absolute speed demon. We've cranked up the performance, enhancing the zero to 100 times. We tuned the car ourselves, got rid of the restrictive standard catalytic converter. And of course we turn up the boost because why would we settle for anything less? So guys, join me on this epic journey as I go through all the stuff that we did. This is not your average car restoration story. There's a tale of determination, passion, and focus, and a big learning curve for my son, Thomas and I. So if you haven't seen the first episode, we picked up this car for $5,000 off Marketplace. It said that it only needed two things, but we found out it needed over 200 things, including a brake caliper, missing interior pieces, broken diff bushes, missing handbrake, missing brakes, missing brake booster lines, faded paint, random nuts and bolts missing under the car. So in the first episode, we bring it back to life. In the second episode, we gave the car a wash and we bought some ego gray paint for this car, which is beautiful. It's got that gold, green, and purple metallic. We started fixing up the dents in the original Territory Turbo bonnet, which is unique to the Turbo Territories. And in the third episode, we actually painted that bonnet at home in our carport, got it on the car, and then we fitted a wastegate solenoid, which someone had removed of the car, meaning that this car was not commanding the boost that the computer wanted it to, which is extremely dangerous. Since then, we've continued to do many other roadworthy repairs to the car. So much has happened in the last six months. We had to fit some inner guard linings, which we got from Pick Apart. We gave the car a full service using Penrite Payo Estar oil, changing the oil filter. We've gone with a 10W60 oil, which is recommended for these turbo engines. In the second episode, I also smashed my foam cannon gun. I cracked the shits with it and was on the quest to buy a new gun. So I ended up buying a Ryobi pressure washer, which was actually cheaper than the standard hose attachment. And oh my God, is it a game changer? This $89 Ryobi pressure washer, highly recommended. Bought it from Bunnings, comes with a foam gannon attachment. You can clean concrete with it, clean your cars with it, clean your engine bay with it. It's been absolutely flawless. It's nice and small and easy to move around. Go out and get yourself one. We also sourced an original Turbo Territory Gear grill. So this grill only comes out on the Turbo Territory gears. This is something I did not know. So standard gear territories have a grill which has horizontal lines going across it. Some of them have the cross hatch and the cross lines, but the Turbo Territory gear has a unique design, which is actually really rare to find in good condition. So I picked up one of those, wanting to keep the car authentic as possible. I also bought a box of random clips and plugs because these are always needed when you're putting things together like guard lining, putting grills on, putting bumpers back on. And it's coming really handy for just little plastics that have fallen off and we want to replace the plugs or clips. So that enabled us to fit the guard linings properly and to fit this grill and keep it looking nice and neat. The original clips when they come off always break. I also finished the bonnet buff off. I also started experimenting with some two-stage paint correction on the door right here. As you can see, the original paint from this angle looks insanely scratched. So the driver's side of the car was obviously hitting the sun for many years, which is 
oxidize the paint, making it look like the clear's fading away. But in most cases, if your car's doing this, you can just cut and polish it back and seal it with ceramic coat and it'll look like new again if you do it properly. We had Barrowscan come out again and help us remove the, the rest of the error codes that we had with the ABS sensors, engine light, and so on. So it was amazing to see the dash looking normal again. And he also showed us the Territory F6X tune, which is an FPV tune that comes out in the F6X variant of these models. So after doing some research, we found out that the Turbo Territory gear mechanically is exactly the same as a FPV F6X which has 270 kilowatt from factory. This car having 245 kilowatt from factory. We realized that we're actually able to flash the ECU with the F6X tune and get identical performance as the FPV. So this was something that we're looking into doing. We went down to Autobahn and picked up some new wiper blades. Cause as you know, when it's raining, it's annoying when your wipers make so much noise. So if you are looking for wipers to be changed, Autobahn fit them for free to your car amazing service they also do battery fitting for free and globe fitting so if you've got a globe out want your battery tested or need new wiper blades important safety features head down to autobahns and get some new wiper blades there thomas had to take the front bar off as we had some condensation building up in the driver's side headlight which was unfortunate but it was great that we had a spare that came with the parts from the car so we threw that in bit of a job taking the whole bar off to change the light but we got it done and the front end is looking so much better. We had an engine light pop back up, which was super annoying because we had to wait for barrow scan to come back, but we decided to actually download the software called Forescan, which allows you to read error codes within Ford Falcon and Territories. You can reprogram certain things, program keys if you have a key reader and heaps of other stuff, but we just got it basically to read codes and erase codes if we need to after we fix the problem. So the ECU, if you didn't know, has little warnings that come up and direct you to exactly where the problem is. In my old BF, we had an issue with the seatbelt pretensioner, which is a little airbag in the seatbelt that makes the seatbelt latch pull down when the airbags go off. One of those was faulty and the computer directed us straight to the exact problem. Whereas you can't tell just from looking at the engine light on the dash. So having that computer capability allows you to diagnose problems easier and quicker. So if that's something you're looking into doing yourself and having that convenience, check out Forescan. Continue cleaning up the car even more, fixing little things. We shine up the exhaust tips as they were quite faded and looked like they hadn't been shined up in a few years. Thomas spent an afternoon getting all of the tail lights and brake lights and reverse lights and indicators working properly. So he's gone along and checked all the globes, replaced the globes that needed replacing, which is making the car look so much cleaner and functional and roadworthy. The rear diffuser was also quite bent. So while we were under the car shining the exhaust tips up, we straightened the rear diffuser, just giving the back of the car a much cleaner look. And we also did a full underbody wash, removing all the dirt, grime, oil from underneath the car so we can see if there was any oil leaks or other things that we needed to attend to. We also pulled out the cabin filter. So if you guys didn't know, this is located just behind your glove box. So any air that comes into the cabin of the vehicle has to go through this filter. It's often clogged with leaves and crap over the years and people forget to clean it. So you just drop the little glove box lever down and you can pull this filter out and you just clean it out, wash it out, tap it out, let it dry and put it back in. You'll not only get better flow, but the air coming through your car will be cleaner. So we took down the territory for its first roadworthy inspection after getting it pretty close to roadworthy. They picked a few things. We had to get a horn as the car didn't have one. One of the rear seatbelts was not pulling out at all, so I had to fix that. Tighten the handbrake cable. He also picked that the gearbox did not have enough oil in it, and when it's cold, it would hesitate shifting. And they also said the car needs a new windscreen, so we had AJ Autoglass come out and fit a new windscreen, which is nice because you have zero stone chips at all, and the car feels like brand new when you're looking out with the front windscreen. So after doing those few things, we got our roadworthy certificate, and we're super pumped to be driving the car on the road, enjoying it, and here come the performance upgrades. So for many years, I've had this Int cooler sitting in my shed that I picked up for 50 bucks. It's a Auto Technica Monza intercooler. I did have one on my old BF, which made 320 kilowatt, and it was such an amazing cheap upgrade. It's known that the top mounts on the territories heat so pretty badly, so that scoop in the bonnet actually filters air directly to the intercooler. So we changed this up 
So my idea was to put a B-Series Falcon crossover, because a lot of guys throw them out and put front mounts with turbo side intakes. So we picked up one of those off Barriscan for hundred bucks. I had the upgraded cooler sitting in my shed, and we worked out that the piping from the B-Series Falcon just bolts straight up to the Territory, has the same pathway through the front. I think we had to modify one pipe. So that was a bit of work doing that though. We had to take the whole front bar off again. We had to re-clock the turbo, to face a different way to suit the intercooler piping. So we had to take the whole manifold off. We took the turbo off. While the turbo was off, I gave it a good clean because it was caked with oil and made it look good again. We put everything back and the cooler was working good. However, we had oil leaking from the turbo. I was scratching my head for days trying to figure out where it was coming from. And after going under the car like 20 times to try and see where it was coming from, I realized that the oil drain line, which is where the turbo sends oil back to the sump, had a little hairline crack in it that slowly got bigger. Really hard to see when you're under the car. So we had to take the turbo off again, completely manifold off, turbo off got the oil drain fixed and put it back on and happy days. So this new front mount cooler will keep the air intake temps cooler for longer and be a little bit more efficient than the tiny little top mount cooler that we had before. It does have its limitations though. So after fantasizing about this F6X tune, we decided to download the professional version of PCM Tech tuning software. They have software tuning packages available for Ford Territories, Ford Falcons, Ford Mustangs, and some other cars. Check out their website. But to tune with PCM Tech, we also needed to buy a special cable to communicate with the computer to the laptop, and that is a Tactrix cable. If you guys are thinking about tuning your cars at home or wanting to do ghost cams or increase the timing a little bit or just see what your car's doing, data logging, go to TI Performance website. I'm gonna have the link in the description below where you can buy the Tactrix cable to hook it up. Or if you're a workshop looking to get into doing something like that for other people, like ghost cam tuning or whatever, you need one of these to be able to speak to the car. So we ordered that from TI Performance. It came in the mail and we're getting excited to load this F6X tune in and get a little bit more horsepower from this car. So after driving the car around and enjoying it, I kept noticing all the defects in the paint and the faded driver side and it was really bothering me. I know that if you have your car ceramic coated also, it is less maintenance when you wash the car. So if you do it properly, you should be able to just soap up the car with the foam gun and then high pressure wash it. In most cases, that will get rid of most of the dirt. You don't actually have to touch anything on the car like sponges or rags or mitts. Every time you touch the car or use a rag on it, it increases the chances of you scratching the paint, which is what happened to this car. As you can see here, the paint is scratched from many, many years of use and washing by previous owners. So I spent two to three days doing a two-stage paint correction on the whole vehicle. As you can see here, the before and the after. So this involves using cutting compound to which acts as like a liquid sandpaper and sands down the paint slightly to bring back the gloss. If you're gonna do this to your vehicle though, be very, very careful as your paint might be super thin and you'll burn through the clear and then you'll have to repaint the whole car to get the same look again. So do it at your own risk or seek professional advice. We then also polish the car afterward, which is called machine polish, which takes out small little swirl marks and brings out the gloss. We've also then coated the car with a mother's ceramic coating spray, which is like a liquid glass that goes on and, and bonds to the paint. So you spray this on, you let it tack off onto the vehicle and then you buff it with a cloth and this repels water and dirt so much better than an untreated paint surface. We also got some mother's car wash and instant detailer. So if you think about doing something similar to your car, want to bring the paint back to life, head to Autobahn and check out the mother's product in store. Worked really well for me. I also went over the whole car and touched up little scratches and chips with the Ego Grey touch-up paint that I got. The paint is far from perfect up close, but when you stand back, it just, it makes the dents less evident when you're standing back from the car, giving an overall cleaner look. As you can see, the car's come a long way since I got it. We also went ahead and did a full service ourselves on the ZF transmission. So this is a German made transmission. They come out in a lot of BMWs, 335Is and stuff like that. And they need to be serviced every now and then. So me not knowing when the last time this thing was serviced, I thought to save me money in the long run, I'm gonna service it myself. Previously with my FG, I've had it serviced by a professional, but I thought I'd give it a go myself this time. How hard can it be? So that involves unscrewing the whole transmission pan, buying a gasket kit and the correct 
oil. So we did that with Thomas one Wednesday after school. We had our oil pump to successfully pump the oil in and we had to have the car running while we're doing this because the converter needs oil as well. And the car drove a million times nicer after doing this. So our oil was pretty low in the trans and after filling it up to the correct amount, the shifts were a lot smoother and the car just drove overall nicer. So the ZF is known for a seamless transition of gears. You're not supposed to be able to feel the gear shifts as it's going, but with the low oil, it was feeling a little bit jerky, but that fixed this. We also then found the F6X tune online and used PCM tech to copy that file onto our car. And the way that works is there's different levels of PCM tech you can purchase. We got the professional version, which also lets us tune the ZF transmission. So online, you can download various different tune maps from different cars and have a look and see how those cars are set up. And PCM tech allows you to compare those maps to your current car's map. There's many, many different parameters within the car's settings, spark tables and fuel tables and boost tables and throttle position tables and all this stuff that all works together. So if you do do it, don't go around just changing whatever. Make sure you know what you're doing before you change anything. So we downloaded an F6X map and we compared it against our current map, which is the Turbo Territory map. And then we applied all of the changes that the F6X has in it. It's basically a boost curve, a little bit different spark and fueling, and also slightly different transmission tune. So we loaded all that in and the car definitely felt so much better. So it was a little step up from being about five PSI stock to I think it was seven PSI in the F6X. When the intake temps get higher though, that steps up to nearly 13 pound in the F6X. So the night I tuned the car, I was driving around and I stopped at Macca's to get a coffee. And when I parked the car, I noticed a random suitcase in the bushes and I went up and I got it. And I was like, what the hell? Someone's lost their suitcase. So as you do, opened it up, had a look inside. I found some designer bags in there and there was like three or four wallets inside the designer bags that had nothing in them. And I was thinking, what do I do? Do I keep it? Even the suitcase was a Samsonite ultra light, super expensive suitcase. I asked a few friends what I should do. I was like, what should I do? Should I keep it? What if someone's got a tracker in it? They track me down. I'm like, and everyone's saying like, do the right thing. Just take it to the police station. So went down there. Barra scan was actually with me that night, helping me tune the car a little bit and checking over things. So we went down to the police station, handed the suitcase in. And I thought, well, after 30 days, if no one claims it, then I get to keep it anyway. So took it down. Unfortunately, didn't hear anything back about that so whoever got their suitcase back good on them thanks for thanks saying thank you for handing it in so enjoying using the car as a daily loving it taking it down to the beach with the family enjoying with the kids way more comfortable than fg to drive and it's so much easier to hop in and out of being an suv taking the missus out for breakfast um, the front mount intercooler definitely sparking some interest from a few people here's this guy like fully underneath the car having a look and taking photos of the setup if you know this guy tag him he reckons he's got a turbo territory at home so also one of the performance restrictions on this car is the exhaust. So the car has a single exhaust, which then goes into a twin section and then out the back. But within that twin section, Ford from factory put a plug inside half of it. So the territories only use half of the exhaust. And one of the cheap and easy mods to do is to take that middle muffler section out and knock this grommet out. And it basically gives you double exhaust flow. Why Ford did it, I don't know. Maybe it was an emissions thing. Maybe it was to do with sound, but Thomas and I one night after school took the exhaust off tried to knock this bung out we had to use like a long piece of rear but that didn't work so we ended up just cutting it open and getting this little bung out to give us double exhaust flow and then we welded it shut again and put it back on the car the car definitely sounds a little bit more throaty but it has double the flow which is good we then started looking into ghost cam tunes because now we have the ability with pcm tech to tune our own car so we looked into how to do a ghost cam tune and basically you change the VCT intake and exhaust overlaps and it makes it sound super lumpy on idle. I had no interest in keeping the car like that, but Thomas thought it was cool. So we loaded it in one night and this is what it sounds like. Okay, so Thomas tweaked the tune a bit. He raised the idle and we are. We are now lumpycam.com.au, baby. It sounded way more lumpy before. It was a bit of fun while it lasted. We couldn't get the car driving and running properly with that tune on and just kept stalling out. With further 
tweaking and research, we probably should be able to get it good though in the future. Maybe we'll offer it to you guys. So another awesome thing about PCM Tech software is you can data log and record all of the data while you're driving. This includes boost pressure, air intake temperatures, oil temperatures, coolant temperatures, manifold absolute pressure, cam angles, air to fuel ratios, lambda, short-term and long-term fuel trims, wastegate duty cycle, pretty much whatever you want. You can log it while you're driving and you can do a hit or you can do a pull and see exactly what the engine is doing at what point in different driving conditions because the car responds differently in different temperatures. So it's cool to just look at and learn and, and start to figure out what's going on within the ECU. We decided to change the spark plugs. We put some brand new genuine spark plugs from Ford in the car. We also put brand new genuine Ford coils and we replaced the fuel filter. Good God knows when it was changed last and we don't want to be turning this car up and playing with things when they haven't been replaced. We hit up George from Venom Exhaust and he's hooked us up with a high flow cat converter. This is one of the other restrictive things in the Ford Territories and the Falcons and most cars is the cat converter is choking up the exhaust. So Venom sells a whole bunch of different bolt into the factory exhaust system high flow cat pieces. Check out their website. It'll also be in the description down below. If you go to Territory Turbo, Ford Falcon, check it out. It's a pretty good upgrade, especially if you're looking at tuning your car. So we put that in with Thomas. Again, car has a way nicer sound to it now. It's still, once the exhaust warms up, it feels like factory, but on startup, it's definitely got a more throaty, meaty note, and it gives the whole exhaust more flow, which means that the turbo is happier. I also had my old 1000cc injectors from my FG sitting up on the shelf. So we decided to go down to Tuner's Edge and buy some top and bottom adapters because the FG Falcons run a smaller injector. So I got some adapters and we've fitted those into the car. We've also put in a Walbro 460 high flow fuel pump because that was the next thing holding this car back from turning the boost up. Another essential when road tuning a car we found out is a wideband sensor. So we've gone and put in an Innovate LC2 gauge, which is pretty old school, but it does the job. The two main ways you can blow up your engine, detonation, when the exhaust gases in the piston chamber ignite at the wrong time, fighting against the piston and creating damage in the top of the piston. And the other thing that can also kill your engine is leaning it out which is not enough fuels, too much heat, melt pistons. So this wideband gauge tells us exactly what's happening. It actually goes, screws into the Venom exhaust that we bought in a pre-made bung hole that's already there. And then it wires up to a gauge, which then we can then plug it into the laptop and see exactly what the engine's doing at all times. Because the Ford factory system only has a narrow band, which either tells you it's lean or rich. It doesn't tell you how much. And this is perfect for road tuning. Since then, we've been playing around with the tune and we've got the car up to about 14 to 15 PSI at the moment. We've realized that we have a soft actuator on our turbo, which is our next limiting factor. But the car absolutely rips. We might be taking it to Calder soon. Stay tuned on the next video. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.